just arrived to the national park Nuxeo and we are going hiking and also searching for some funnel chanterelles in Finnish it's Supilo Bahvero and here is one very special lake because here I saw for the first time when I was in Finland Wuperswan which is the national bird of Finland Surprisingly, it's here very calm because when we were leaving Helsinki it was there quite windy. Here are our first Supilo Bahvero, Fanal Chanterelles. So good sign that they are growing. Fanal Chanterelles are one of the last mushrooms. They don't mind when it's freezing. We already experienced some snow this year and they are in totally good condition. I recently heard that the first snow officially counts only if at 8 o'clock in the morning of the winter time there is outside at least one centimeter depth of the snow which I heard for the first time I always thought that the first snow is when you firstly see it apparently there is some meteorological approach I uh, heard it only in Finland I don't know if it's some Finnish way of counting first snow or if it's valid everywhere there are some lamp ruins. Aha, so leftovers only. Yes, uh, the, the pakkanen has hit harder on, on them, I guess. See how pale, pale can be also. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here are some residuals of Lampan Kape. This species apparently doesn't survive freezing temperature. Here are some funnel chanterelles in not very good shape. for this one and now I can see that there are in the back more of them and big bunches Here is one very interesting patch of Supilo Bahvero in the old trunk of the wood, so I will show it. They have here some microhabitat and they are very large. Yes, very good quality. Hopefully anything won't bite me there in the hole. Squirrel eating. Okay, very nice funnel chanterelles and here is some eating place of a squirrel. And this is the largest Supilo Bahvero I've seen so far. And here another one, very good one. This one has frozen stem, I can feel it. Bunch, but oh, oh. 
Yes. Here is another bunch of very old ones. So these I'm not taking. Here is very good spot, very large funnel chanterelles and they seem good, at least some of them. Yes, and also here some, some mm. of them are bad. We evaluate the bad ones based on the edges of the cups that when they are um, very dark brown and they are also breaking, they are not good anymore. They are like, they are beaten by Pakkanen. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Pakkanen is Freezing temperature in Finnish. And here is an example of the bad one I'm not taking. That the edges are very dark brown and it just doesn't seem good anymore. Yes, here is even some mold from the other side of the cap. Here, if one looks closer, there are plenty of funnel chanterelles. They resemble leaves a bit. We are just in the beginning of our trip and our basket is half full. So it seems very successful mushroom picking. Here also in the open, like a little bit freeze. Yes, I also had one. Here in the open area where the mushrooms are not protected, they still have some signs that it was freezing during night or I don't know yesterday two days ago how was it here in Nuxia and here is here is even some ice on the stem of the mushroom what have you found Okay, I'm going there because apparently there is something very interesting. Oh, that's unbelievable. I think we will fill here our basket. And here on the right there are even more of them. And as I'm walking, I can see even more and more of them. Like here two bunches. Here it continues. And there are even more. Okay, so this is the best place for final chanterelles I've seen so far in my whole life. I can just walk and walk and see more and more mushrooms. So now we have here plenty of work to do. Very good about funnel chanterelle is that compared to golden chanterelles they can be very well dried. So I think that most of them we will use for drying and from some of them we will prepare maybe some soup. Yes, I think today it's very suitable because it's a little bit chilly, the bean yes. soup, you know, the soup, very suitable.
I must watch my every step because the, the ground is covered with mushrooms. But look how they are very pretty. Yellow stems. The color of the cap a bit vary on the growing conditions. Here apparently in this light patch they are light, lighter than when we pick them in some more shadow part of the forest. I think that maybe we will just fill our basket now and then we will go for a hike because we won't have any way any more space left in the basket. And I don't know if we have some bag with us where we can still pick the mushrooms. I think that the best way is to always take with some cotton or textile textile bag of in case there would be this big harvest. Plastic bag is not very recommended. Plastic bag should be forbidden by law. <laughs> Wait, okay, alternative is also paper bag, but disadvantage is that when the mushrooms are wet as today, then the bag can break easily. Supilo Vahvero with this tiny, tiny one. I very much like the variability of mushrooms. Also, our picking is very valuable. In shops one can see small box of funnel chanterelles which cost, I don't know, five to six euros usually. And it's really very small box where could be... How many grams could be in that small box? 300 or four. Yes, three or four hundred. Otherwise, the forest guard Tapio will not be very happy. <laughs> I think that the forest guard Tapio is happy that someone is picking something in the forest. Yeah, yeah. We've been here picking only around 20 minutes and the basket is already full but there are still plenty mushrooms around so it will come soon the toughest part and that will be to leave and leave the rest of the mushrooms here in the forest. One can very well recognize that the winter is coming because it's very silent here only occasionally there are some birds singing but otherwise very peaceful huh, i found here some lingon berries so i have good snack they are called funnel chanterelles because of this funnel in the middle of the cap which is going through the stem. I'm wondering if one can see through the mushroom but there is some dirt in the stem. And I guess in Swedish trumpet. Yes, that sounds also trumpet. Mm. 
there is another big bunch and we are almost not happy about it because we don't have where to put it anymore but these ones are on the edge of pickability because here are these bad edges so I don't know maybe we will pick different ones or Yes, some of them are good, some of them we are leaving. Here I found one chanterelle too, which I can see through. So here is a proof that it's really a funnel, funnel tunnel. I'm wondering if I will ever get bored by looking at these beautiful colors, lichens and mosses there is also some kaluna there between the trees is visible the like we were passing in the beginning of our journey Got attached there some branch. And do you have the not knife? We have here a terrible situation that I lost the mushrooming knife, which happens to me a lot. We eventually always find <laughs> it, but now we just must go as we came here the same route and search for it. Here is one very old Lehmantati, I think, in very bad condition. I found the last Shantaral probably of the season. Mm. And it's very good condition. Okay, so here is apparently another one. And this one is very good this one and this one are not good anymore I would feel happier if we would find the mushroom knife Aha, here is one musta torvisieni This one is bad. So we've been searching for the mushroom knife more than we've been searching for mushrooms. And we went through all the places we were and I cannot see it anywhere. So maybe it's lost. There is one possibility that it would be on the bottom of the basket. But as I know myself, I think that it must be somewhere here in the forest. This is probably chaga mushroom. It's very valuable, considered as a superfood because it has very beneficial effects on health and it contains a lot of antioxidants. The best way how to use it is to make tea from it. Here is one Vala oracas. Aha, it's not. I don't know what is this, but it smells bad. There is a mire on the shore and I know that there are meat-eating plants. So I'm going there now to find some. Here is this very black pool. It's not very easy to get to the edge of the lake because the shore is quite wet, flooded. So I had to go through this highly dense path to get there. Hopefully I won't end up 
wet, wet socks. Oh, I hope that the meat eating plants would be some very, very soon. Here is a cranberry. I'm rewarded for my effort. There is still some ice. I haven't found there any meat-eating plants, but at least I found cranberries. This is also a mire. This black berry is crowberry and same as cranberries it grows on bogs and mires. Crowberries are also very tasty and healthy. I just found some information about that meat-eating plant I was searching for. Drosera rotundifolia. That it survives winter in a form uh, as a small bud called hibernaculum and it develops leaves uh, after winter. So now it's not visible with pure sight, it's somewhere there, very, very tiny. This small island is a breeding craft for red-throated diver. These nesting rafts for red-throated divers were placed to different lakes in Nuxia and that's because red-throated diver almost stopped breeding in Nuxia because uh, uh, the national park became so crowded with people that uh, the red-throated divers didn't have here enough peas for nesting and that was the limiting factor. The breeding crafts became very successful because of that the population of red-throated divers recovered here and they are using it every season. I have some uh, photo of broods. Also, I think that in this particular lake we saw this year a brood. So this is an example of successful nature conservation activity. For those who are interested, I will link below the video a reference for the article in which uh, this is described. So now when we done a lot of mushrooming and uh, knife searching, it's time for coffee and some good snack. So we can do our meeting. Yes. Our usual snack contains coffee and Karyalan Piraka. This time we had uh, something a little bit different, which is Karyalan Piraka with oat. It's called Kaura Piraka. And the most two common Karyalan Pirakas in Finland are Peruna and Trisi with mm. potatoes and rice. Can you, can you use Peruna and Trisi also? Aha, yes, I have them actually in the backpack. It's very good snack for hiking because they can be in the backpack for a long time and they still look the same. And also it's healthy, it's just dry, dry dough and filled with mixture of potatoes or uh, rice porridge or in this case also oat porridge.
This one is Peruna piraca uh, with potatoes. Here is a uh, Rizi piraca with rice and this is this unusual type with oat Kaura piraca and the common name is Karyalan piraca. And another part of our snack are scones which I made yesterday because I was cutting a video from our travel to Ireland and I got desire to have some Irish scones so I baked them and we have also them now for our trip. I put there also some dried cranberries. We arrived home, took the mushrooms out of the basket and apparently the mushrooming knife was there the whole time covered with mushrooms. So that's very good. <laughs> now we are going to prepare the soup because we are feeling quite cold. We are now preparing a very simple but very tasty soup with uh, funnel chanterelles. There are also two golden chanterelles and one mustator vesieni. It's very easy. We just uh, firstly fry some onion. When it gets golden we will add the mushrooms. So now, now here comes mushrooms. Yes. They are very wet so they will release a lot of water. This water was released only from mushrooms. And now we must wait till it evaporates completely. Then we can add other ingredients. Now we added there the carrot, vegetable bouillon. We added also beans. Now we must add more water. We added some herbs. It has been boiling for some time and now it's ready. 